Here we are. Ready to take that final exam, Ron. Um, do I look a bit feverish to you? Good try, Ron. Harry and I will meet up with you outside in the courtyard after our exams. Bye. Nice knowing you. Ah, there you are, Ron. Ready to start your final exam? Well, actually... Right then, here we go. I must warn you, Ron. This exam is fairly difficult. And also a bit dangerous. Um, dangerous? To earn a perfect score, you must collect all five challenge sheets. Go to it, Ron. Good luck. Oh, right. There's five challenge shields for each final exam instead of ten. I'm not sure how difficult it is to build any given tower for a castle out of these massive stone bricks if you're using magic, but imagine someone saying, Okay, this tower is going to be for one set of dormitories. This tower will be for a second set of dormitories. This other tower here will be used to study astronomy. And while you're at it, build a tower over there that's hollow on the inside except for a central pillar that doesn't connect to anything but has rotating platforms for people to magically jump their way across. But you gotta give them credit, we only just started this final exam and the gameplay involving the usage of the spell is already quite different from the main lesson. And it's always nice to have variety like that. I guess I have to just walk off the edge to get back down to the lower level. Shit! Damn. Okay, that was close. And stupid. I should have actually looked down first to make sure that lower platform was going to catch me. Also, it's interesting how both the main lesson and the final exam is judged based on your ability to acquire gold shields instead of directly measuring your ability to perform the spell. Although I guess you need to know how to do the spell in the first place to even get the challenge shields anyway, so... Yeah. Okay, don't hit your head. That was close. Alright, hurry up, please. What? No! Why the fuck did it do that? Did I accidentally double-click the mouse? Jeez. <sighs> okay, well... And now I should be able to reach the next column. And... Yeah, just gotta make my way across more moving platforms. Could you imagine doing this in real life if you had a fear of heights like I do? Shit's crazy. I actually feel a tiny bit of anxiety doing certain parts of this if I have to inch my way to the edge of a ledge to make a jump. There isn't even anything in here? I didn't... No, I couldn't have possibly gone backwards by mistake and gone back into the tower that had the first challenge shield, right? Okay, I know that's different. Now the Carpe Retractum statues are orbiting the central pillar, and this one is much thicker, too. Oh fuck, get it, quick! Oh, good job, Ron. Okay, there's a third shield. Let's see what this does. Well, we can see that happening thanks to the in-game camera, but how's Ron supposed to know that that just opened up and that that's where he needs to go next? Oh, and Peeves, unlike the last game, never bothers us in the middle of our lessons here. Only in the corridors. That's nice, I suppose. Oh shit, there aren't two people here to defeat it. Oh, of course. Just cast twice. Well, that sucks. I can't do a preemptive strike on a skeleton as he's forming. You'd think that would be when he's at his most vulnerable. Or she, who knows what gender it used to be. I guess you could tell by looking at the pelvis, I don't know. Could have sworn that I landed on the edge at least of that spongify tile. What have you got for me? Okay, a frog is nice after having to deal with those skeletons. Even though I never got hurt. Really? We're gonna do this thing again where we give out more than one chocolate frog at a time? What the fuck? You're shitting me! Two more? Depart 
when would you ever fucking need six of these things at once? One makes sense, and I can maybe understand too, just in case the player is on the brink of dying, but six? We don't have all three of our main protagonists here right now, but even if we did, they seem to share a chocolate frog and its healing effects amongst themselves already. And again, you can't store these frogs for later use. And why couldn't one suit of armor just give me one frog and the other give me a few beans? Or better yet, why even have the suits of armor here at all if they're not going to give beans, pasties, or cakes? There was already a chest in here, you might as well just stick the chocolate frog in there too. I just thought of something, though. Rick DeSemper is said to be a tickling charm, so... We're tickling skeletons? Maybe a spell with more force behind it would be more appropriate, such as Depulso or Flipendo, even though the latter spell doesn't appear in the PC version of this game. Although I read on the Harry Potter wiki that it remained in the console versions. Whoa. Okay, I didn't even realize that was up there. Oh, and these jumps. These are nerve-wracking to say the least. There's little room to make a running jump and little surface area to land on, so you've got to be pretty accurate. I don't want to necessarily say that it's easier than it looks, but I'm actually surprised I landed on all ledges successfully. Cool. Four at once. What the hell? Did my first two or three spells seriously not work? How many shots could it possibly take to push them over the edge? You know what's happening here? They're getting compacted together near the hole and the ones I hit earlier eventually recover because the ones I hit later moved between them and my wand and blocked me from being able to finish them off. Wow, there's the fourth shield already. This'll be over more quickly than I anticipated. But I'm alright with that. It gives me yet another chance to work ahead so that I don't feel so pressed for time adhering to my self-imposed schedule of one video per day after the start of a series. I guess for that reason I've been trying the trend towards a larger number of episodes in a series that are on average shorter in length. After that, my plan is to take a break and do a few one-shot videos for the next month, then attempt a non-Harry Potter series around the beginning of September, which should require less time and effort with regards to editing and script writing since I want to try and do some improv and see how well that works out and maybe, hopefully without killing myself, start uploading the Goblet of Fire around the beginning of October, a game which I have yet to even start playing. I have no idea if the schedule is even remotely realistic, I'm, I'm sure I could do a few one-shots in the following month, but after that I might find things piling up too rapidly, so this is by no means a schedule that's set in stone. So, you'll want to jump on these rotating ledges as close to the center as possible since the outer edges of a moving object always spin fastest, and I died. Brilliant. Fuck it, just jump at them like you normally might with a running jump. Yeah, that seems to be easier. At least when I died, it dropped me off right there again. Wait, I just remembered that might be important. God damn it, I didn't reach it in time. Guess I'll just kill myself again. Which I guess I don't mind since I know the game is going to drop me off right in front of these rotating platforms again. Well, those were pretty generous treasure chests. I hear the Goblet of Fire game is not as good as the first three games, or any of the other games that followed it. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing for me, though. I guess the worse it is, the more I can say about it in a potentially humorous manner, but I'd like to think I can do the same thing with good games, too, hence the other Harry Potter series of videos so far. I certainly don't think it's a bad thing that people commonly focus on bad games for the sake of making funny videos, almost to the point of it being a cliché, in fact. I'd just like to think that I could do the same thing with good games, too. Man, there's some wicked acceleration and deceleration in this game sometimes. Great. 
more imps down there. Well, I handled them once in the main lesson, so no big deal. What did that Depulso even do other than trigger some music? point of that platform exactly. Now I have to go back up again, so that's a wasted 15 seconds of my life. Not really a big deal, I suppose, but seriously, what's the point? Just don't let go. You wouldn't want to land crotch first on that gate. Guess I can't pick up a cracker if they throw it into an opened chest. Oh, come on, that was far enough away, it shouldn't have hurt me. Since it's easy enough to hit two imps at once, you'd figure you'd also be able to hit three imps somewhat often as well, but it's surprisingly difficult to do that for some reason. Oddly enough, even though Lupin is known to be a werewolf, he's still giving these final exams before packing up and leaving in response to concerned students and parents. In the book, we had the final exams before the climax of the plot, but in the game, they're reversed, and here's why that's a good thing, actually. Just ask yourself what you would prefer. Having the three final exams after the three main lessons, or, for the sake of avoiding the repetition of the same thing too often, having the climax in between the main lessons and final exam, thus spreading out some of the more similar kind of gameplay. I feel like they did the right thing here by switching things around like this. It also allows the cutscenes to better able to give the impression of time passing by, even though it still feels like everything could have happened in the same week. Oh, that was a short episode. And no, there's no visit to the bean bonus room after a final exam, even if you do get a perfect score by collecting all five challenge shields. But yeah, that's it. The Transfiguration final exam is going to be next.